So what we could do now is change that and decide to do a continuous stitch. That's where we go from one end to the other. And we'll try and do that now for you. So same thing again with the needle holder. Needles in the right place, all mounted up. And we would start and we would go from one end, going again with the curve of the needle, curve of the needle coming out the other side, avoiding the tip when I pull it through, bringing my material through, and I want to start this and tie it off. So two throws one way, this time we'll do two throws both ways, because we feel we want to start this as a starting point. We'll do one more for good luck. Okay, So we've now got that ready to go, and what we'll do is make our stitch continuous. Why would we use a continuous stitch? Well, if we want to have a wound that's uneven, made even, and by tension and pressure, we can use interrupted. If we want to sew something up that's relatively straightforward and doesn't have any areas that are um, gaping or under tension, a continuous is nice and easy and quick. And so you make your incision, you make your, your circle just as we did before, bring that through, pass it. You start mounting the needle holder again, and you make your next one again in the same distance that you did apart, again doing it with a continuous curve of my wrist. It's a slightly small needle, this, for this wound, and I'd normally use a bigger one. But if you want, you see this now, that will now lie at an angle. My next stitch should end up being exactly parallel to that first, and it will, because all I'm doing is focusing on being straight, in my wound. As long as I'm straight in my wound, the whole thing will lie flush with the next, like that. We'll put a third one in there, and it should do exactly the same. So I just come straight. I don't bother changing any angles. All I do is bring my stitch through, and as I do that, that will lie against that. And you can see that's coming along there, and that's going to close very nicely. So what we could now do, if you want, is to do something called a mattress stitch. Before we do that, have a look at this. This is where we want to get some really good hemostasis in the wound, where we want to make sure that we get an edge that isn't going to bleed. And we can do a stitch that's called an interlocking continuous. It's quite a funky stitch. You bring this through, and instead of just pulling it all the way through, you can go round through here, and as you pull, that will lock. I can show you something even more funky than that in a minute. I'll just do that again for you for the camera. We're going through the wound and what we want to do is to lock it and this is a really good hemostatic stitch. Some people called it a blanket stitch. But you bring your stitch and you bring it through the loop. As you then t pull that down, if you watch what happens over here. Can you see how it's locking the wound together? And it's bringing those two. So if I've got a wound edge, for example, like the scalp, which is very close, prone to bleeding, and I'm getting a lot of, and it's very hard to stop bleeding from the edges because the scalp has so many layers that you want to try and close. This is a lovely stitch to bring through. As you bring that through, you just simply get it through the middle, and as you pull it, you can see what's happening. It's closing it really nicely. So now what we've got to do, we've finished the end of our, our suture line. We want to tie everything off. So. To tie this off, I've only got one end. So I've now got to make another end that's separate. So the way to do that is to come through the stitch like this, and now I've got two ends. And all I've got to do is to tie my two ends exactly as I did before with my suture. It's done. So I cut that off. Hey presto, we're finished.